the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us now call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Cast your kindly light upon your faithful Lord, we pray. And with the splendor of your glory, set their hearts ever aflame, that they may never cease to acknowledge their Savior and may truly hold fast to him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever possesses the son has life. Whoever does not possess the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Praise, God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise Praise Lord, Jesus Christ. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise Praise Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Please rise.
the heavens were opened and the voice of the Lord thundered. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus began his ministry, he, he was about 30 years of age. He was the son, as was taught of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Melia, the son of Minna, the son of Matha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Ovid, the son of Boaz, the son of Salah, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadab, the son of Admin, the son of Arne, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Canaan, the son of Arpasad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Good morning, Father. The gospel, of course, there are many options here, actually. I just uh, choose the genealogy according to Luke. There are two genealogies in the gospels, that of Matthew and that of St. Luke. If you're going to make a comparison, the highlight of the Matian genealogy tells us about Jesus as the son of David. That David and Jesus are actually the peaks, the, the zenith of history. So if, you, if you're going to read Matthew, you will find that the, it's like a range, a mountain range, and there are peaks there, and the the three important, well, let's put it, uh, simplify it. The two most important peaks are that of David and Jesus. Telling us that Jesus is the new David. While on the other hand, the Gospel of Luke gives us a different, another version of the genealogy or the list of the ancestors of Jesus. And notice that it did not end with... Uh, David or Abraham, but rather it went further, back to uh, Adam. So here, Jesus is the new Adam. If Matthew emphasizes that Jesus is the new David, the Lucan Gospel emphasizes that Jesus is the new Adam and it is from him that a new generation, a new creation will come out. If you are going to look into the Gospel of John, John pushes the story back further. If Matthew is up to Abraham, Luke is up to Adam, John started from the very, very beginning, even before time started. In the beginning, when God, when the Word was with God and the Word was God. So it pushes the the genealogy quotation marks further the origin of jesus not only with adam but even in god so you can see now the the three three histories of jesus in terms of of his quotation marks origin okay let me give you a short reflection on the gospel so Jesus started his ministry when he was about 30 years of age 
and he was thought of as a son of Joseph. Of course, we know that because Jesus was born by the, by the power of the Spirit. No? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and without any human intervention, except that, of course, of Mary, who is the vessel of, this, uh, of the Word. But Joseph was, of course, the foster father. He has no father, only mother, and that is Mary. Almost similar to Adam. Adam, on the other hand, has no mother. Wala nanay si Adan, di ba? Wala man siya sa gibun, wala man siya gibunag. Pero still the same, he was only born of the father. Because it was the father, according to the Genesis story, who created Adam out of the, of, out of the earth. So, he, God created him. So, Adam has no mother and even no earthly father, but only a heavenly father who created him out of the earth. Which shows again the similarities between Adam and Jesus. Jesus, as I said, has no father, only mother. And Adam has no mother, only father, but still the same. Their beginnings, their origin, comes in a very mysterious, powerful ways of the Lord. No? Special people. They are, they are different from the rest of us. Adam was the father of the old creation. It is from Adam that the world came into, came, I mean, well, it came into order. Of course, it was by God, no? But it was Adam who named the animals and the, maybe the rest of creation, putting things into order. He was the, the custodian, the guardian of the creation. And here, according to St. Paul, Jesus is the new Adam. Because this time, the old creation which was destroyed by sin is now restored, renewed by the death of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, Jesus is the new Adam and the people that belong to Jesus are not of the old creation but that of the new creation. Okay, given all this, so what's the implication in our lives? Well, the implication is obvious but difficult to, to live out and sometimes difficult to experience, no? to, to feel experientially. We are already of the new creation. We do not live in the old creation, take note of that. We Christians, by virtue of our baptism, which, by which we are incorporated into the mystical body of the Lord and by which we are cleansed of our original sin, we are already living in the new creation. We don't live anymore in the creation by which Adam presided. Wala na tada yan. Waay nakita sa sina ng creation. Because that was already destroyed. That was already, that which is old was already restored by the death of Jesus. Naging pag-una sa ginoong tanan. Ginbago yan na ang tanan. Gani sa bagay, nga masiling nato ti padre ti kung ibag unos ang Ginoo nga ah, nagatigulang kita gihapon nga nagamasakit kita gihapon nga naga suffer kita gihapon is it not that these things came out because of the sin of Adam and Eve nga ah, may suffering kita nga ah, may ano kita may masakit kita nga ah, nagatigulang kita nga ah, may mga baha may mga linog mga and everything why is it that there is misery in the world is it not because of the original sin, the disobedience of our first parents? Correct. All these things are actually coming from, as a result of the destruction of the old creation. If so, therefore, if we are now living in the new creation, then why is it that we all have these things? Yes, still. Di ba lang, ati, aram ni Gapon, di ba, old new creation, ang kita, bakit nga ganun, why is this suffering? Well, actually, these things will always be there. Not because, not, well, these things will continue to be there precisely because we are reminded that we are not creatures of the earth. We are citizens of heaven. And these things will continue to be here present even if the old, this old creation was already destroyed because of a new 
because of our participation now in the redemption of in the redemptive process. Saan po sila ngon? Saint Paul said, "Now we are still in the new creation, but it's still groaning in pain. Now like a childbirth. Anjan na yan, but hindi pa siya completo. So what we are experiencing now are the pangs of childbirth. You see, there is already the joy." Just like, for example, kamu na nakabata, kamu tana nga nakabata, of course, experience this this joy of having a child. Pero kung nagabata ka palang, especially kung normal, no, hindi si Sarah, kung si Sarah, of course, natulog kayo, wai kamaan kung nakatabo. But if you are delivering a child, you know the pains, di ba? You know that it's very the pains of childbirth, the fangs, no, the bangkil, ang bangkil sa pagbata. So, sa pagbunag sa isa kat, katinuga din sa kalibutan. And that is what we are feeling. All these difficulties that we have is not natungod naging gabaan gano'n sa Diyos. Ang sa una ito, gaba ito sa Diyos. Siya, pina yan ito. Pero sabong ngayon, hindi na niya pina. According to St. Paul. If ever you are experiencing the difficulties of life, no? these are not the these are not punishments of God. These are not the the retributive uh, or the The vindictive, no? I am, I am, vengeance is mine, of the Old Testament. No, these are already the pangs of birth, of the new creation. So therefore, according to Saint Paul, whenever we experience these things, it is because that we participate in the crucifixion. This is already part of the process of the new creation. No, that's why. Butang tagi na sa pinsarta, hindi niya gabas ang Diyos. That's why kung nagamasakit ka na, nag, uh, ang imong kapamilya, nagbaba na, whatever, or problems you have, it is not because you have committed sin or naging gabaan ka sa Diyos. O kung anong sala ko man yan, nagamuin eh. No, it's not. Rather, it is now the process, you are now entering into the process of birthing into something new. And what you are feeling, what we are feeling now is the birth Pangs. I don't know if you get what I mean. No? I, I hope so. It's a little bit theological, but and as much as possible, I would like to to convey this message today. No, so in other words, whenever we are suffering, whenever we are, when things doesn't go as we plan it to be, it's not because you have done something wrong. Rather, it is because as part of the church. As part of the mystical body of Christ, as belonging to Christ, that is already the process of 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 God telling you of becoming a new person. That something good is being stored to you. That you are growing. Shall we say again? Not only the birth pangs of the new creation, but the growing, the pains of growing up, the growing up pains. And lastly. We are still in the Christmas season. Of course, it will end pa on the baptism of the Lord. We are still Christmas time. Christmas pa rin ngayon. And we have just celebrated our New Year, of course. Again, Happy New Year to all of us. Pero, and I think many of you has done your, you know, Your New Year rituals, mga bilog, mga kwan, mga pula, maroon, whatever the color of the year is, and you have done all these things, no? With the idea, with the hope, with the prayer that that 2023 will be better than 2022, which is okay, man. Wala mga problema. After all is said and done, that's always the the desire of the human psyche that every beginning. Signifies or marks a better one than the old one. No, pero sa totoo naman natin alam niyo ba na kita ng tao, no? Isa ka mahamot sa kugalingo natin. Sa Christmas season, sa December 2022, ano hambal niyo? Ay ba o kapigado gina? Kapigado gisa bung. Pero sa totoo na, mas lika tayo nga maipas na lika tayo ng sa 2021. Ito dawa dawa pa. Pero remember what you said in 2021? Amo mana? Ay. Kapigado gina, maya pa to sa last year, ito dawa-dawa pa. <laughs> Hindi wala, no? Do wala kayo kasi linga, ay, kanami sa buong. Oh. Always that. Or maybe kung the reverse for those who really have good year, no? Pero what we are trying to say here is, 
whatever we are doing and whatever we pray for and whatever actions or rituals we did for the coming of the new year, remember always that all this, the source of our blessing would always be the Lord. It's always God who is the real source of the blessing. And maybe all these external things are manifesting our intentions. Pero bottom line, it is God. God alone is the source of all blessing and of all joys. How I wish to say things more, pero dito na adiretas na, kailawing ng sermon ko. May sugpon mo ko tani, no? Pero maybe that's enough na. Pero yun, I leave you with this thought. The Lord is the only source of all blessings. And whatever we will experience in this coming year, in this year, in this new year, is all blessings of the Lord. Whether it whether from our own perspective it is bad or good, all these are God's blessing. And if ever there are difficulties Despite all the rituals that you did last December 31, midnight, January 1, if ever things was not still go as you planned it to be, it's because that is what the Lord wanted and there is blessing there. Remember that everything is a blessing from the Lord because God would always want us to grow. God always want us to be to feel loved it is only us that needs to open our minds and our hearts and discover that god is there present in all circumstances of our lives and if we are affirmed on this then truly we can say that our new year is blessed and grace filled amen Now let us now pray that we may truly deserve to be called God's children and trust in His protection as we say, Lord, listen to your children. Lord, listen to your children. That the baptized may live up to their dignity as children of God and be faithful to their promise to renounce Satan and his works and to serve God and the Catholic Church, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. That when assailed by weakness, doubt, and oppression, we may hold on to Jesus who has conquered the world, we pray. Lord, listen to your children. That in time of war and civil disturbance, the Lord may restore peace and tranquility in our mind and in our society, we pray. Lord, listen to your children. That through the wisdom of its leaders and the integrity of its citizens, our country may achieve prosperity and enjoy harmony and justice, we pray. Lord, listen to your children. That through the work of new evangelization, men and women may come to the knowledge of the truth and advance in the path of salvation and love. We pray. Grant us, O Lord, that nourished by your word in the bread of life, we may successfully overcome life's trials and effectively nurture among all the peace that your Son has left us. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through jesus christ our lord for through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word not only does human mortality receive unending honor but by this wondrous union we too are made eternal and so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that you fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. For us to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Sebastian, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and Pedro Calungsod, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace and leave you, my peace I give you. Look not into our sins, but but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we be made fit to receive your gift to this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray the Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Sebastian. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.